administration of our lifespan with something called the human aging hormone based on the works of Cynthia Kenyon. Right. So she was a gerontologist out of UCLA, Berkeley, and she discovered uh, hormone receptors on the cell that when the hormone is matched with the well receives whatever it's receiving, the aging hormone, it causes the cell to age. But by artificial means, they can block it. And lo and behold, it triples the lifespan of 30 days to 90 days for one of those little worms. Right. So just telling you that there's something else done besides just pulling back the telomeres. We also know that at one point in time, homo, uh, the genus homo or the human type had 13 strand DNA. Right. They say that they maimed us by scaling it down to two strands. That's not true. Scaling us down from 13 strands to two strands is an upgrade. Comparative, an comparative analysis at this point applies. And if you get a 1955 Cadillac and you pull a 2024 STS, one of the first things you're going to notice is the size difference. Right? As technology advanced, we went from having a computer that took up a whole city block to a laptop. Actually, a phone. <laughs> yeah. So now, when you look back and you see that there's evidence everywhere of giants, right? Wow. Understanding the law of entropy help you understand why we not fifty feet tall no more. For one, we don't have to fight what we call the great lizards or the dinosaurs. So we don't got to be tall enough to put a T-Rex in the head like now. But we're supposed to be smart enough not to stick our fingers in our face in the alligator mouth. But apparently we ain't because you got people sticking their face in alligators' mouths and getting their fingers bit off trying to put their hand in their mouth. Right? But we ain't supposed to be wrestling alligators. If you don't believe me, you can ask any Sobek priest. The Sobek priest is the human caretaker of the lizards. Yes, they, the Sobek is the crocodile guy, which is really the alligator guy because he's really from Florida. All of the pantheon that you see in Kemet is from the Americas. The Blue Avians, the House of Tahuti, first family of the wise ones, teachers to humanity. Sekhmet, the great priestesses of the mother science, the science that helps the mothers know how to co-op mothering and make it into a pleasure instead of a plane, right? And if you mess with them babies, you're going to have to calm her down some kind of way, even if you got to get her drunk first. Then you have what we call the house of Heru. This is the priest's. I mean, the uh, princes, the young male prince who's going to grow up and to become an adult, he's going to be an heir to the throne. But if he don't develop himself, he's going to forfeit. Right. So Heru becomes a different God when he doesn't make it to the throne, but it don't mean he not have a purpose. Right. So <clears throat> all of this stuff is being taught to us either purposely backwards or names being changed or details moved out of the order to confuse us. Our genetic memory is what keeps us tied to the Jesus story because we know that Jesus and Emmanuel is actually Isis and Heru or Horus. Right? We also know that one of um, Isis's names is Mary. Right. We know that the European tongue Mary mean rebellious woman. But in the Kemetic tongue, it means the noble lady. Difference in character based on the perception of the people. The irony is Earth was divided up on the matriarchal side into 12 regions. Each big mama was called a daughter of Isis. Collectively, they called the priestesses of Sybil. 
the civil priestesses, right? Or in modern secret society term, they the Eastern stars. And they supposed to have 13 uh, regions of the earth and each one of them is the big mama over a region and then they have the one who sits on the ISIS seat as the big mama of the planet and then you just reduce the scale down for the local area and the same thing applies right the best way to solve the problem if something is, is build it the way it's supposed to be built it or run the way it's supposed to be run and that reduces entropy but we don't know that the moral decay of a broken society is the entropy of the humans living a certain lifestyle under certain conditions. This just so happened to be the chapter of misery. So the first had to stay the last position because they're the only one strong enough to stay there long enough for the process. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you read in uh, Madame Blavatsky's uh, Isis unveiled in secret doctrine, she always talks about um, how the gods teach us with these women. Okay, so Madame Blavatsky talk about root races, right? What is these root races that she's talking about? She's talking about different civilizations that rose from what we call stone age to golden age and she records five root races but nobody don't know what the people of the moon are that she talk about who they are and what they function is on the planet and how to access a power base the moon people are the people with the milky complexion that belong on earth but then you have the ones with the milky complexion. That's the byproduct of the lab. So now you got two different group of pale faces. The youngest two daughters of uh, uh, the daughters of Isis is called Scott and Scotia. And that's Scotland and Ireland, respectively. Ireland <clears throat> coming out of the house of Scotta. And um, Scotland is named Newton. Uh, Scotland, because Scotia, the twin sister to Scotta, named it after her sister. Ireland was Orisha land at one point. But because they, the vowels, Grim Law of Grammar say that during the translation, all vowels are interchangeable for pronunciation purposes in order to nail down the correct pronunciation of the word. So when you know that they was originally called Orisha land and the Orisha priest that wore the serpent armbands for the women and the headband for the men, then you understand that why there's no uh, skeletal remains of a snake anywhere on Ireland, but they tout uh, uh, St. Patrick for getting rid of all of the snakes in Ireland. Those are the Nagas priests. They were little twa or Bantu Bushmen who settled um, Scotland and Ireland by the orders of the Queen of Heaven and Earth, who we call Isis. All this stuff is designed to confuse us and mislead us on purpose. And this is why everything that was spoken in riddle must be unraveled. Once the riddles is unraveled, then the riddler got to answer to the joke. Right. So all everything that they telling us is not true. So you assume everything to be false until you can validate something. Then you say this is true. But you can't validate it using the scholastic method because it requires you to lean on what they call approved sources. None of your ancestors fall under the category of a pr approved source. If it doesn't have a, somebody with alphabets behind their name writing it, then they are automatically rejected by academia as an unapproved source. They don't got no PhD. Look, Albert Church War and um, Gerald Massey the, was the fathers of Egyptology. In modern Egyptian studies, none of their works is recognized um, by academia as valid.
you can't use them for references in your Egyptian studies in university. But they the fathers of Egyptology, the first yeah. to translate hieroglyphics. So why are they not recognized? Because once you study what they telling you, it breaks all of the religious paradigms at the same time. The Does Muslim don't know yep. and that why that's important. Archaeology and anthropology takes us to Harrison Ford, Tomb Raider, in the name of science. Right. If a peep if if you naturally do something. Like if you naturally go to the water hole every day at three o'clock, I'm a hunter and I know what you naturally do. You, you being my prey now, I'm going to be at that uh, watering hole at two forty five. So by three o'clock, when you stroll up to that water hole, I'll be there to get you. They understand how we move based on the sociological studies of humanity. They know when we group up, when we break up groups, what causes both by nature. And then they know how to artificially duplicate nature's response <clears throat> in order to make them break up the ones they don't want together. They call it infiltration of a group. Or to unify the ones they want together, they call it the sudden conversion to a religion. But they know what it is and they know how to do it. And I'm going to give you three names, and this is why they don't want us in groups. Denmark Vasey, Gabrielle Prosser, Tucson Overture. When they catch us in groups, that's what they looking. That's what they expecting us to behave like. Because the way they treated us, they deserve whatever we do to them. They earned it. Not that, not that just we want to be mean to them, but according to if you give a person his just due according to his works and his deeds, based on what they did to us, we can't never do them that bad. We we not psychologically and emotionally equipped to or do <laughs> yeah, to do the dirt to the magnitude that they deserve based on what they did to us. We barely got the aptitude to protect our own self and our families because of what they done to us. See, in in I know you probably gonna remember some what I'm about to say next. In the sixties and seventies, if you jumped on a brother and he got five brothers at home, and you whooped him, tomorrow he coming back. And all his brothers gonna be with him because they want to see him whoop you. Right? And make sure don't nobody jump in it. Now, if a brother get in the fight and he go tell his brothers, they say, Oh, that's cute. I gotta go chase this bag, or I gotta go chase these buns. Right? They not they not finna. I will I will bust your whole face up by my brother and be 100% wrong, but I'm not going to know I'm wrong until it's over with. We ain't just start shooting people. You know what we just start doing? What's new is shooting each other. Okay. 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 Um, but I do know I've seen about four different Michelles. Just I, the most I counted was four. Wow! You talking about oh, Sleepy Joe? Yeah, him. That's not him. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's at least six different people playing the character because they don't all play him. Like one of them don't play him for a whole week straight most of the time. But the one who do who, the the one I call him his stunt dummy is Jim Carrey. When he fall upstairs trip on stage that's jim carrey when he give a coherent authoritative speech that's either james wood or this dude named arthur something i don't remember his last name beckenworth or something but those are the two when he's talking like he got good sense and he really right. body about it that's who they use for that but the when they you know the one that wears the, the cool one wears the aviator glasses. yeah and but the one that do all of the goofy stuff 
that Jim Carrey did the same thing in the movie Mask. Like when he said, I can describe America in one word. That's Jim Carrey. Wow. Right. And if you once you go back and watch Mask, every time Jim Carrey is playing uh um Sleepy Joe, you're gonna bust out laughing because you're gonna catch it. He's gonna always do something to tell you that it's him this time. Right. The other ones, they don't want you to know because they want to keep the charade up. But Jim Carrey be trying to make it leak. But he can't say it outright under the threat of death. If he tell it, then they gonna murder him. So he don't tell it, but he put it in his performance as an artistic expression of the character played. Remember, we all playing characters. So remember in the old in the old movies, a kiss was a face smash. I mean, you you just press lips. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, but it was a soap opera that had what's called the first tongue kiss. It was a big deal in the news. It was all Nightline did a segment on it. 60 Minutes, it was a big deal. Uh, are we going too far with the um, content? Now they got whole men dressed like women with thongs on. And they think that's normal. The first thing we need to do is cut our children off from the program that they use for social programming. And we, they call it school. If you look the word school up, S-C-H-O-O-L, and you do the etymology, it's going to come from a Yiddish word, S-H-O-O-L. When you trace the Yiddish word, you're going to end up with a Hebrew word, Sheol, S H E O L. Is that it? Are we getting the hell now? <laughs> and when you translate the Hebrew Old Testament, everywhere you see hell is the same word that we're using for school, Sheol, hell. hell. The abode of darkness, the dismal abyss. So the first thing we have to do is take on the responsibility of teaching our children ourselves, informing family groups. This is why the sister support circle is critical. It's where we came up with it, take a village to raise a child. The women's support group or the mother support group, they supposed to form into mother groups that can help each other, give each other breaks, Problem solved with the local whatever going on. You got a group of bad kids picking on this group of good kids. How are we going to handle it? We're going to go to their parents. We're going to, you know, what, whatever we need to do to solve the problem to make sure that the bad kids don't hijack the school and take over the good kids. So <clears throat> that's our first order of business in alphabetical order in the order of importance of nearly full as nine areas of people activity. The first thing is economics. Second thing is education. <clears throat> so when we look at a child that's misbehaving, he's not misbehaving. He's rebelling against oppression, but he don't know what he's rebelling against because he's not, he hasn't accumulated the life experience to know. And they've cut you off from the elders by villainizing people for being over a certain age and then villainize the ones that's under a certain age to the seniors. So now you got old people can't stand these little new badass kids, and then you got the young generation can't stand the most shriveled up old creepy mothers over there. <laughs> See, that's why I'm that's why I'm in another place. I, I find my I, I'm right right in the middle between. <laughs> But being in the middle, you can get to see the error of the old people that's assuming all of the young people are bad and the error in the young people and right. thinking that because they old that they don't give proper guidance. Well, we used to have mandatory sessions. This is why we was always spending the weekend with Big Mama, all of the cousins, because she was going to teach us the family history. 
but they got caught teaching it. They got murdered so many times that now they just have the family over and spend quality time and try to imprint on them with their energy to fill in the family. Right. <clears throat> so a lot of us remember 15, 20 children in the house um, sleeping on pallets on the floor, got their little blanket and pillow rolled up in the corner, got some on the couch. All the bedrooms full. One of them might have one of the uncles and aunties that's married, so they got to have their privacy. Right? So, we all remember that that's over a certain age, but now you can't get two good mothers to get together to help each other because 